Well, 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 my friends, take a look at what I have here. Not one, not two, but three of the new Chanel Le Beige Healthy Glow Sun Kiss Powders. We are going to be doing a full review today. I have swatches. I have daylight applications of all three of these, and we're going to be doing tons of comparisons so you can figure out if any of these are worth the hefty, hefty $95 price tag. So if you want to hang out with me today and hear all of my completely honest thoughts, then keep watching. All right, let's dive into this review. As I mentioned, I have here the new Chanel Le Beige Healthy Glow Sun Kissed powders. These are going to be limited edition for summer 2024, so they're not going to be around forever. We have an oversized compact that combines a bronzing powder, a blush, and a highlighter. There are five palettes in this range. I picked up the lightest three, but I will show you guys here a photo of all five. There are two deeper shades that I didn't pick up. They're just a little bit too deep for my skin tone. However, I am going to be showing you guys swatches that I took of those palettes, and I will be talking a lot about the formula and the finish. If you have a deeper skin tone and you think that maybe those are going to be more suitable for your complexion. These are going to be retailing for a hefty $95 price tag USD. They did launch first in the Chanel boutiques. That's where I picked mine up, but they are going to be available online. So I will update my shopping guide that will be listed down below friends with wherever you can purchase these. Usually they become available on the Chanel website not too long after they launch in the boutiques and they're already popping up at department stores. So make sure you check the description box and the comments to see all of the links on where you can purchase these. They're $95 but I will say at least you're getting 15 grams of product. It is an oversized compact, similar to the oversized bronzers that they launched. I think it was about two years ago at this point. I'll show you guys just for comparison, one of the winter glow blushes. This is 11 grams and this is 15 grams. So you're definitely getting a lot more there. And then also for comparison right here, I have the blush palettes from, I believe it was last year. This is 12 grams. So you're still getting more in this palette. So, I mean, at least we're getting a little bit more product for our money. A couple more notes here for you guys. These are actually made in Italy. They are talc free. They have an 18 month shelf life and they do have a pretty strong fragrance. I know some of you guys like that, some of you don't. It basically smells like the Chanel skincare or if you have the Chanel Le Beige foundation, it's gonna smell exactly like that. Yes, they are very perfumed. Once I put them on my face, it pretty much dissipates, but just calling that out. And I will put a photo right here, guys, of the ingredients in case you wanna screenshot that and see if there's anything in there that maybe you want to avoid. And now for what many of you have been waiting for, we're gonna be getting into swatches of all five palettes, starting off with light coral. This is the only light palette, as they call it, in the range. The other ones are categorized as medium and deep. You can definitely tell this one is a little bit more subtle, particularly with the highlighter, which is going to be kind of like a light champagne beige, and also with the blush, which is just like a very soft kind of golden coral. Those are definitely going to be best for fairer complexions. And then the bronzer, I would say, is just a little bit lighter than the medium tone ones. I'll show you some comparisons in just a second. And it is also a little bit more on the neutral side. As you take a look at those swatches, friends, notice how the finish of these powders is a little bit glowy, a little bit more airbrushed. You don't see any glitter. I wouldn't say that they're you know, so shimmery where they're gonna be mistaken as like a highlighter. They're very subtle, but you can kind of see that natural healthy glow that they're kind of talking about in the name of these powders. By the way, if you happen to be new here, hi, welcome. My name is Sophia and I help you shop for luxury. I'm so passionate about luxury beauty and fashion. So I do a lot of new makeup reviews here on my channel, fun and helpful guides and interesting industry chats. So if you love luxury beauty, hit that subscribe button to join our fam. We would love to have you. We have so much fun here on my channel. And if you guys are liking this video, please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. And with that friends, let's get back to the rest of this review. Next up, we have the two medium tone palettes, starting off with the one that is called medium coral. And this one is going to have a deeper and more noticeably peachy gold highlighter. Definitely good if you're a little bit tanner than myself. The bronzer is going to be a little bit pinkier in undertone, but you'll see in a second, the depth is not that different from the light coral that I just showed you. And then finally here, probably the, the best part about this palette is the beautiful vibrant and coral blush. Take a look at that friends. And let me tell you, these blushes are pretty pigmented. You can build these up. So I love that they really went for it and gave us a beautiful, vibrant summertime coral blush in this palette. And then we have the other medium palette, which is called Medium Rose Gold. You'll see right off the bat that the highlighter in this palette is a lot deeper.
deeper than the other two that I just showed you. This is going to be more of like a bronzer topper on me, not so much a highlighter, but it is going to be a beautiful highlighter if you have more of like a medium to tan skin tone. The bronzer in this palette is equal in depth to the medium coral, but it's just a little bit warmer. And then the blush here is going to be pinker in tone. It is called medium rose gold. And so you get this beautiful, vibrant summertime flushed pink color, which I absolutely love. Now I did promise you that I was also going to show you swatches of the two deeper palettes that I didn't get to pick up. So I first want to show you guys swatches of all five bronzers on my hand. I have shots both in the boutique in their lighting and also outside the boutique in the natural light. There is a very big jump between the medium shades and the deep shades. The deepest shade is quite deep. It was very pigmented. I really did not have to dig around to get that much pigmentation. So hopefully that is helpful for those of you who have deeper skin tones. And then separately right here, I swatched the highlighter and the blush from the two deeper shades. The one on the top is gonna be the deep mauve. So it's gonna be this beautiful purpley color as the blush. I absolutely love it. I'm a little bit jealous that that color was in the deep palette. And then the second one that you see there is the deep rose gold and that one is a little bit more subtle and that is the one that has the slightly lighter bronzer in the deeper shades and then finally i'm going to show you guys some swatch comparisons between the three palettes that i picked up starting off with the three highlighter shades so you can see right there at the top i have the light coral that is going to be the lightest and the most subtle highlighter then we have the medium coral, which is a little bit more kind of like peachy and pinky in tone, slightly deeper. And then finally, we have the medium rose gold, which is a lot deeper, as I mentioned before. This one is gonna be better if you have more like a medium to tan complexion. And next we have the three blushes. So at the top there, we have the light coral. It's gonna be a little bit lighter, more subtle and fresher for fairer skin tones. Then we have the beautiful vibrant coral from the medium coral palette. And then finally, from the medium rose gold, you have that beautiful vibrant fuchsia pink. Next, we have the most confusing comparison, which are the bronzers. And I think it's confusing because they really didn't differentiate between these that much in terms of depth. But hopefully you guys can see in the natural light swatches, they are ever so slightly different in undertone. So the light coral is going to be a little bit lighter than the medium ones, and it is ever so slightly more neutral. It is not a neutral bronzer by any means, but it is the most neutral one out of these three. Then we have the medium coral. This one is ever so slightly darker than the lighter one. It has a little bit more of like a peachy pink undertone. Finally, we have the medium rose gold, and this one is going to be similar in depth to the medium coral but it is just a little bit more golden. Again, it's a very subtle difference, but it's there, okay? It was a little bit hard to tell in the boutique in their lighting, but once I kind of took these out in the daylight, I could kind of tell there is a very subtle difference, and hopefully it'll come across in the demo soon as well. All right, moment of truth. Let's get these powders on my face. Now, because there are two medium shades and one light shade, I'm gonna start things off with the two medium shades. I'm gonna do medium coral on this side of my face, and then I'm gonna do medium rose gold on the other side of my face just so you guys can kind of see the differences between the two medium options then i'm going to take all my makeup off i'm going to redo everything and we will do a full face demo with the light coral sound good let's get into it first i have the medium coral shade we're going to apply this to this half of my face and remember this is the one that has the vibrant coral blush the medium tone bronzer with a little bit of a peachy pinky undertone and it has the medium toned highlighter shade. I'm gonna start off with a fluffy brush going into the bronzing powder. This powder is pretty easy to pick up even with a fluffy brush, which I like because it means that it's just a little bit easier to apply and easy to get a nice sheer airbrushed application. Some of you guys were asking me, is it difficult to fit your brush in the pan to kind of pick up the individual colors? I haven't had any issue with that while I've been testing. And you guys can see, this is like a pretty fluffy brush and I still don't really have any issues picking it up. You don't have to grind your brush into this pan to pick up the pigment. It's not like that. I know there are other blushes and probably bronzers from Chanel that are a little bit harder to pick up in the pan, and I would not put these compacts in that category. I feel like the formula is very silky, very airy. You can already tell that I have a nice natural bronze built up on my cheek. 
and I'm using this nice fluffy brush to get kind of like a more natural application. You also can use like a more precise brush if you wanted to. If you do more of like a brontour, you could go a little bit more like under, you know, the hollows of the cheeks. It all depends on the brush that you use. I have a couple other recommendations here as well. We have the BK Beauty 103. This one would be really good because it's a little bit pinched in shape. You could just kind of go like that. If you have any of these like Makie brushes, maybe from Beautylish or Chikahoto or Ihoto, et cetera, if you're a Fude collector like me, these would work really well. And I'll just show you guys a quick little swipe there. You can see that it picked up a decent amount of pigment. If you really wanna pick up a lot of pigment, just go in with a denser brush. Once again, I really didn't have any issues. In fact, I'll show you a clip right here of what my face looked like after I was testing these products yesterday, and I was really trying to build the color up. So you can see right there, you definitely, definitely can build up all of the pigments across all the shades I'm showing you today. Let's get a little bit of this on my forehead using the BK Beauty brush. I'll link all the brushes, by the way, in the description box down below. I have some coupon codes for some of these sites, and some of them actually are having sales right now. So it might be a good time to check out some brushes. And there you guys can see in the natural light, the beautiful bronzer. It does have a little bit of like a pinky peachy undertone. I really like the sort of buttery look that these give the face. They are not super shiny. You'll see some comparisons later on in this video, but they do have a beautiful glow to them. They actually remind me a lot of the healthy glow, the healthy winter glow blushes that launched at the beginning of this year. That's the bronzer on this part of the face. Let's go in with the medium rose gold. Here is medium rose gold. I cleaned off my brush and we're gonna go into this one. And this is gonna be the warmest of the three that I'm showing you today. Hopefully it's apparent on camera. It's very subtle because the depth is not that different. It's really just like the undertone. When I was in the store with my sales associate, she was like trying to figure out if they were different. She honestly didn't know. But my conclusion is that this one, medium rose gold, is just a tad bit warmer. So I think if you have more of like a golden complexion, you're really going to like this one. I think I can pull it off, but would it be like the number one choice if I were to buy a single bronzer? Probably not. I would probably go with the medium coral. So here are both of the bronzers side by side on my face. Very similar level of depth, but just a slightly different undertone. Now we're gonna be going into the blushes, starting off with the beautiful Vibrant Coral from the Medium Coral Palette. I like this little fluffy brush from iHoto. I think this one is still on sale. They have like a little Sakura season sale going on right now. And I like this one because it has a nice little fluffiness to it if you want a very light flush from this blush because these are actually pretty pigmented, believe it or not, I know. Chanel made a pigmented product for a change. And then if you wanted to make it just a little bit more pigmented, you could go in with something that is a little bit denser. This is a refer number five, and this does such a good job of picking up the blush. I don't want to put on too much, but I do want to show you guys how you can build that up. This is also the perfect size to fit into that little strip right there. So that is the beautiful coral blush. And now we're gonna go into the beautiful pink from the medium rose gold. Right here I have the classic cheek from Sonia G. This is a really good option if you want something fluffy. Woo, look how much, look how much it picks up. Yes, so pretty. I almost feel like I put a little bit too much on. I should have been lighter handed, but we can blend this out. Another good option for the cheeks is this one right here. This is the BK Beauty Angie Hot and Flashy A507. This would be good as well. I'm actually gonna use this one to blend that out. So you have the coral blush right here and the pink blush right here. Because they're kind of like both vibrant colors in the same, somewhat in the same color family, they're not like so different where I would say you need to get both of these palettes because they have different blushes. I would probably just decide, do you like more pinky tones or do you typically wear more like corals and warm browns, those types of things. And finally, friends, we have the highlighter shades. I'm gonna go into this one in the medium coral palette. Palette. I'm using a BK Beauty 112. This is a really nice, delicate little highlighter brush. And these highlighters 
have the same finish as the blush, just a little bit more glowy. They don't have any chunky glitter to them. I feel like although these palettes are pigmented, the highlighters just compared to other ones in my collection are a little bit more subdued. They're kind of more what I would expect from a Chanel highlighter. They're really pretty. They add like a nice, a nice glow. They sort of remind me of the original hourglass highlighters that just were a little bit more subtle. So this shade in the medium coral, this is more of what I would think of as like a highlight shade for me. The one in the medium rose gold you'll see in a second is much darker. So right there we have the medium coral. Because the highlighter shade in the medium rose gold is a little bit dark for my skin tone, I'm using this larger brush because I'm going to use it more of like a blush and bronzer topper, if that makes sense. I'm going to buff it into the skin a little bit more. So this is the BK Beauty N17. This was just restocked. So excited. I'm getting like two or three more of these because it's like the best brush ever. You can see that gives a little bit of like a yellow gold cast to my skin. So I like to buff it and sheer it out just a little bit more. Whereas the one on this side, it's more of like a classic champagne shade. So right there, we've got the medium coral. And right here, we have the medium rose gold. Now, of course, we can also put these pigments on our eyes. So I'm gonna do a quick little eye look with each of the palettes. You can do the bronzer shade as like a nice subtle crease. And then I'm going to use the highlighter shade all over the lid. See what I'm saying? How that's just like very, very subtle. It's not like a see it from space type of highlighter. It's super sheer and natural. And then I'm gonna take this coral and I'm just gonna use that as like a cute little accent shade right here on the edge of the eye. So I'm gonna just repeat that on the opposite eye with the other palette. I will put on some mascara and I will be right back. All right, and here is the finished look with medium coral on this side of my face and medium rose gold on this side of my face. Hopefully you guys can see the subtle differences. I feel like it's very apparent on the eyes because I use that deeper highlighter for medium rose gold all over the lid. The highlighters are really the biggest difference in these palettes because like I said, the two blushes, they're different. They're definitely different when you swatch them, but when you put them on the cheeks, I feel like no matter what, you're gonna get a really beautiful kind of warm toned, vibrant flush. So if you have a more golden undertone, if you are more like light to medium, if you are medium toned, then I would definitely go for the medium rose gold, especially because of that highlighter and the slight touch of warmth that you get from the bronzer. Otherwise, I think if you are fair like me, I think you could definitely pull off the medium coral, especially if you really like that beautiful, vibrant blush. Hopefully this was helpful, guys. Comment down below and let me know what you think, which one was your favorite. Now I'm gonna take all of this off and we're gonna dive into the light coral palette. All right, I have a fresh face and now we're gonna be doing a full face of the light coral, starting off with the bronzing powder. And I must say, this one is not that much lighter than the medium toned colors. It is similar formula. It's slightly more cool tone. However, I will say, you'll see in the comparisons a little bit later, I wouldn't call this like a super cool tone bronzer. This isn't gonna be the option if that is really, really what you prefer. But I think because the formula is so silky, you can get a really nice, light airbrushed application. I don't feel like this overwhelms my complexion. I'm not afraid of warmer bronzers. Like I like cool tone ones, I like peachy ones. And sometimes I like something a little bit warmer because I do wanna look a little bit tan, but I do like how I can get a very natural application for this. And I'm using the BK Beauty 103, that sort of fluffier powder brush, which I feel fits pretty well into that little, little stripe right there. Another thing that I will mention is that because this formula is so silky and finely milled, I probably would just be a little bit careful if you're gonna be applying this on top of a very, very dewy foundation or even a skin tint as many of us do in the summertime because we like to use those types of products in kind of like those warmer months for a lighter coverage. I would just be careful about the way that you kind of dip back and forth between that dewy base and these powders because I 
do think that it will be more prone to getting hard pan. I recommend, you know, using maybe like a goat hair brush if you have any trouble with that. And what I like to do is I like to kind of lay it on and then really buff it in. So you can kind of lay down the powder and buff it in as opposed to like kind of going like that or maybe buffing it in straight off the bat. That way you're not getting like a lot of sort of stickiness on the brush that then transfers into the pan. Does that make sense? I just wanna be helpful for you guys. Hopefully you don't get any hard pan with these. I haven't had any issues so far. I just noticed that it is very, very finely milled and sometimes that can happen with these types of products. All right, so here is the bronzer. I think you can tell it's like a little bit more subtle than the ones that are in the medium shades. I could go in a little bit heavier, but I feel like this works for me. Now let's go into the blush. And this is gonna be more on like a light peach as opposed to kind of a vibrant coral that you saw from the medium coral. It's just a little bit lighter. I did apply quite a bit there so you guys can kind of see like that little bit of shine and glow. I love the finish of these. I like a good kind of demi matte type of product. And I like that it has kind of a slight like golden champagne shift. A couple of you were asking me, you know, can you swirl your brush all around and then apply that to the face? I definitely think you could do that for kind of like a blush application. I'm not sure that I would do that if you wanted to apply it to like the forehead and everywhere that I put the bronzing powder, because I do think that the highlighter is gonna make it just a little bit too glowy. But if you want more of like that bronzer type of effect, I think, you know, combining the bronzing powder and the blush is good, or if you want just a little bit more glow like on the tops of the cheeks here. I think you could definitely swirl it around. Make sure you tap off your brush because you're going to pick up quite a bit and then just kind of do like one of these kind of situations, just really like flick it onto the tops of the cheekbones and you get a really nice kind of more blended type of application. Let's go in with the highlighter. We'll do that on the other cheekbone here. This is gonna be the most natural one for me. And there's no chunky glitter at all. Absolutely beautiful. Let's put a little bit of this on the eyes as well. And now I'm gonna add a little bit of the highlighter to the center of the eye. Really nice, soft, monochromatic summertime look. You could literally do your entire face with just this palette. Put a little bit on the inner corner. You could use this as like a little brow highlight as well. And then use the little peachy shade as that accent. So let me finish this up, friends, and then I will be back with the final look. All right, and this is the final look with the light coral palette. Comment down below and let me know what you think. Definitely a little bit more subtle than the two medium palettes, especially because of the blush. It's just a lot more subtle and lighter than the more vibrant shades in those palettes. I really like the highlighter that is in this palette it is a little bit more fair skin friendly, I would say. It really blends and melts into my skin. And also if you want a bronzer, once again, that is a little bit more neutral than the other two, I think that this one is probably gonna be your best bet. Now I am gonna be ending this review with a big comparison section so that you guys can see how the bronzing powders, the blushes, and also the highlighters compare with some of the other ones in my collection that I talk about on this channel all the time. So hopefully you can kind of get an idea which one might be best for you, if any. But before we get into that comparison section, I do just wanna share my general thoughts about these. Do I like them? Do I think they are worth the $95? And which one I think I would buy if I could only choose one? In general, I really like them. I really like the formula. I think it is glowy, it's airy, it's blendable, but like still a little bit buttery. It is just the right amount of glow, I think, for the Chanel customer. I think Chanel makeup, it's a little bit, you know, a little bit more subtle, a little bit more natural looking. And I feel like they really achieved that with these palettes. I told you guys when I reviewed the Winter Glow collection that I really like those blushes. And I feel like the formula of these is very, very similar. While it is expensive, I do appreciate the fact that we have the oversized compact. We're getting a little bit more product for our money. I also like the fact that because it's oversized, you can easily choose between each of the three shades, which we don't always get with products of 
this type. Sometimes we see these from other brands and it's just like really hard to pick up the color that you want. So I feel like it makes it more functional. I also like the fact that it's very multi-purpose. You are getting technically four products in one. Okay, see how I girl math that? So maybe you can justify it that way. And I like these products for summer. I like things that are very like, full face, multi-purpose. I usually like to simplify my makeup a little bit in the summer. So I can definitely see myself using this all over the face, all over the eyes, kind of bringing it with me when I travel. So I do really like that aspect of it as well. Now the shade range is not awful, but kind of strange. Would you agree? Okay, because there's such a big jump between the three bronzers that I picked up and then the two that are in the deepest palettes. It is a very big jump, and I think I would have preferred to see more of like an even gradient so it'd be easier for people to decide which one would work best for their skin tone. Because let's face it, the bronzer part, that is the most important part. Like you don't really wanna get that wrong or else the whole thing really isn't going to work. I think they probably should have taken the light coral one and they should have made this one just a little bit lighter. As much as I do enjoy it, I think it would have been better for them to make it just a little bit lighter and a little bit more neutral or cooler in tone. I think that that would be probably better for those of us who are more fair complexion. And then I think that they probably should have taken the medium rose gold and made this one a little bit deeper. So once again, it's more of like an even gradient. All of these bronzers are fairly warm. You know, they're bronzers, they're supposed to warm up the face. I like the fact that I can go in and make it look very natural. I don't feel like they make me look yellow. But that being said, I know that I have a lot of subscribers that don't like super warm bronzers. But are they worth it? Are they worth the $95? That is the question. I would say, you know, if you're in the market for a bronzer, if you really like Chanel makeup, if you really like that aesthetic and you're looking for, you know, makeup that looks very natural, maybe you have trouble finding that from other brands, then I do think that these are worth taking a look at because these are some of my favorite powder products that I've tried from Chanel. I just really like the fact that they are pigmented but still very easy to work with. So really easy to kind of build up, blend out if I want something more natural or if I want something more pigmented, I can go in that direction as well. I don't always get that from Chanel products. Some of them are a little bit sheer, especially the blushes. They might be a little bit hard to pick up. And I don't get that from these. And I really like the subtle glow that they give as well. So if you take a look at one of these palettes and you can say honestly that every single shade is gonna be something that you would reach for if you had it as a single, then I would say it probably is worth the $95 given that you get a pretty big compact and you get a four in one. If I were to pick up just one, I would probably pick up the medium coral just because I really like the vibrant blush and I kind of like the bronzer that is a little bit peachier in tone. Realistically, I think that the light coral is probably the one that is like the most flattering and probably best for my skin tone. So if you have a fair skin tone, I think you're probably safest with the light coral. But once again, because the bronzer here isn't all that different, I would probably personally pick this one for the more vibrant blush. That being said, okay, if you're on the fence and you need to be talked out of it, let's be real guys. You know what also is really good? That single bronzer that you have in your makeup drawer. I bet you have a coral blush in there that you love as well that you can just pull out and use instead. And don't tell me you don't have a basic colored highlighter, okay? Because these are not groundbreaking shades as well. I was just thinking I have some other palettes in my collection that are you know, kind of similar that maybe you have. You know, maybe you have one of these hourglass palettes. This is the Tiger palette from two holidays ago. This is a little bit, you know, redder and deeper than the ones that I picked up, but same vibe. Maybe you have one of these Charlotte Tilbury palettes. I have the, what is this? The Love Gasm palette. Take a look at that. Very similar concept. I also have the Charlotte Tilbury ones that have like the full face, like the eyeshadows and the bronzer and the highlighter and all that kind of stuff. You guys probably have some of those as well. 
in your collection. So I could probably create, I know I can create literally the same look with these palettes as well. So keep that in mind, okay? They're not an absolute must have, but I know I have a lot of subscribers that absolutely love Chanel makeup and so do I. And I think that they are a really nice product. I don't think you're gonna be disappointed. And with that, let's get into the comparison so you guys can figure out if all three of the shades in either of the palettes is gonna be a must for you. Now we're gonna be getting into some comparisons with these palettes. Let's starting off with the bronzer shades. I have all three swatched right here. We have the light coral, the medium coral, and the medium rose gold. So I have a bunch of bronzer comparison requests here from you guys, starting off with the Gucci bronzer. This is not going to be quite as warm as these three. See how that one's a little bit cooler and more neutral. I also have the Tom Ford Soleil bronzer in the shade Terra, and that is going to be a little bit softer and similarly a lot more neutral than the Chanel ones. I have right here the new RMS bronzer in the shade Beach Walk Betty. This is going to be more pinky in tone. It is also going to be a little bit more like glowy and luminous, even more than the Chanel ones. I know that they are, they have a little bit of that healthy glow. This is going to kick that up a notch just a little bit. I also have the shade Tan Lines from RMS. This is going to be the same formula, but it is a little bit deeper, still on more of like the neutral side, not as peachy as the Chanel. I also have Malibu Muse from RMS. This is the warmest one that they've made. So this actually is gonna be pretty similar to the ones from Chanel, but I would say these come across like I said, a lot glowier. And then right here is the deepest shade from RMS. This is Bikini Beach. And this is gonna be neutral and it is also gonna be deeper. I think that this is probably similar to the, is it Deep Coral? One of the deep shades from this Chanel line. Right here I have Hourglass Luminous Bronze Light. These don't swatch very well. They look very kind of weird and light. That's not too bad. This one's a little bit warmer and lighter. It also is a little bit glowier. All right, so I started a fresh arm because we were running out of room. And next up, I have the new bronzers from Dior. These are the ones that have the bronzer, the little bit of blush, and then there's also the glow powder. So it's kind of like a similar concept, but not exactly. You're not really getting as much blush here. You can't really pick up just the blush and just the highlighting powder, like it doesn't really work that way. It's more of a swirl everything around kind of situation. And the tone of these, I feel like when I swatch it here, it looks very similar, but when I actually put them on the face, I find that these pull a lot warmer than the Chanel ones do. I don't know why, like the swatch looks kind of similar, but when I put them on the face, it looks warmer. By the way, this is the one 032 pink bronze. And then I also have the 031, which is the coral bronze. And if you watch my review, then you will know that these don't, they don't look that different. They really don't. There's not enough blush for them to be so different. And I really have to dig a little bit more to get this powder because this line from Dior, it's just like, it's kind of designed to be more subtle. It's designed to not have a lot of like kickback in the pan. I like the Chanel ones better. I still like like these, like I'm still gonna use these, but I told you guys in my review, I use these more as like a blush, not really as an all over bronzer. Whereas the Chanel, I really feel like you could use it as a four in one. I feel like you can kind of do your whole face with that palette. For this, it's more of like a single product for me. And then lastly, friends, I have the two shades of the Terracotta Light. This one right here is the Light Warm. It's got more of like the peachy tones in here. For these, I kind of feel similar to how I feel about the Dior. They're a little bit more pigmented, which is nice. Even though they're called terracotta light, they are a little bit more pigmented, but they, at least for me, are used a little bit more as like a blush, something that really just kind of warms up the face because they have more of a pinky tone, whereas you can see the three from Chanel, they look more like bronzers to me, but if you like something a little bit more subtle and warm, then I think you will like this. And of course, 
you really can't, you know, like they really mixed up the colors. So you can't really pick and choose what style of product you want to place on which part of your face. And now I have some comparisons with the blushes. So we have the light coral, the medium coral, and the medium rose gold. And I want to start off by comparing these with the winter glow blushes, because remember I told you guys, I thought the formula was very similar. So right here I have mauve glace. This is probably going to be a little bit more like purple in tone, but I thought I would just kind of you know, show you for comparison. This one is a little bit deeper. This one looks more similar to the blush that is in the deepest palette, okay, that I showed you the swatches of earlier. Next, we have Rose Polaire. This was the lightest one of the three. Oh, these are so pretty. Okay, so it's a little bit rosier than the light Coral. This one pops a little bit more. And then the third winter glow blush, we have Coral Givre. I'm curious to see how this one compares. Okay, so it's pretty similar to the medium coral. I think this one looks more pink and this one looks more orange. I also have the blush duo from the summer collection, Rose's Coquillage, and I didn't like these at all. They're a very similar formula. They just are not very pigmented at all. Oh, like, look, it's so, do I even need to try and swatch them more? The tones are similar, but the formula is just completely different. Next, I have a couple blushes from RMS because I kind of felt like the colors were similar, but also the finish is a little bit similar as well. I have Bohemian Girl right here. This is a beautiful kind of like peachy coral. It's kind of a little bit more luminous than the light coral right here. It's a little bit brighter and more highlighting. I also have Bermuda Rose, which I was kind of curious, would this be similar to the medium rose gold? So it's a little bit more vibrant and kind of bright pink. I feel like this comes across as a little bit warmer. And then I also have Mai Tai. This is a gorgeous sunny coral. Yeah, I feel like Mai Tai and the medium coral are pretty similar, but you do get more of a shift in these RS ones. I have tons of reviews of these guys if you wanna check them out on my channel and you can kind of see, especially these two, it's got a little bit of like that pretty golden reflect. We're running out of space here, so I'm gonna be swatching on this side. These are the three Chanel blushes. And next up I have 04 Bright Coral from Gucci. I feel like this also has a nice demi-matte texture to it, but it doesn't pick up quite as much pigment. It's a little bit sheer and more subtle, but I feel like it's kind of in the same realm. And then I also have the Armani Beauty Blush in the shade Mania, which is a bright coral. Let's see how that looks. I feel like that one is a little bit more subdued than the bright coral that you see in the medium palette. And then the last comment that I wanted to make friends regarding the blushes is that this formula is quite different from the blush palettes that they launched last year, blush and eye palettes, whatever you wanna call them. This formula is a little bit harder to pick up from the pan. It doesn't really produce any kick up at all. I think that maybe these are kind of like a baked formula. I really like these as well, but they're just a little bit more sheer. I know that one looks very vibrant, but some of the other ones in here, for example, this one, they're very sheer on the face. So just kind of keep that in mind. You know, if you didn't like these, you might like these newer palettes a little bit better. And lastly, we're gonna take a look at the highlighter shades. So I have them right here, the light coral, the medium coral, and the medium rose gold. I just turned my light on, so you can maybe see this a little bit more easily and see the reflect. So right here, first up, I have the RMS highlighter lighter in Prosecco Fizz. This one's gonna be, yeah, pretty similar to these lighter two. I mean, they're not like groundbreaking shades, right? It's just like a beige highlighter. But the RMS one, you can clearly tell, is a lot more reflective. See how more subtle these are? Next up, I have the Chantecaille Real Glow in the shade Stella, another one of my favorite highlighters. That one is a little bit warmer. Finally, I pulled out one of the Tom Ford highlighters. This is Oasis from the Soleil Collection last year. I do not have the one from this year, but I thought I would pull this out 
just so you guys can kind of see a comparison of the finish. It's very similar to the medium rose gold. All of these are more reflective than the ones that are in these Chanel palettes. And these are some of my more subdued, natural, melt in the skin type of highlighters. So I think that just kind of gives you an idea of how natural these look. All right, friends, and that is all I have for you today. Thanks for sticking with me to the end of this video. If you like this video, please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. Let me know. Do you think you're going to be picking these up? Did I sway you either way? What are all of your opinions? Tell me what you think about the shade range. Which one would you pick up if you could pick up any of them? Let me know all of your thoughts down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, friends, I hope that you see some beauty in your day and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.